At Big Data SV 2014 is brought to you by headline sponsors Wan Disco. We make Hadoop invincible and Actian accelerating Big Data 2.0. Hi everybody, this is Dave Vellante, and I'm Cube here with Jeff is Kelly. Is a live this is Cube. Studio. This is our coverage it. live of Big Data SV Silicon Valley. We're here at the Santa Clara. Hilton, right across the street from the Santa Clara Convention Center, where StratoConf is going on all week. And the Cube is, as you know, a live mobile studio. We go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise. And we love to bring innovators on, startups, uh, big companies, mid sized companies, customers. And uh, we have a Cube alum here today. Lawrence uh, Schwartz is with Attunity, he's the vice president of marketing and has been on a number of times. Lawrence, welcome to the Cube. Good to see you again. Thanks for having me back. So, Attunity is smoking hot. You guys, you know, the, the public company, stock's doing great, and uh, has really been a meteoric rise. People are, sort of, I think, getting the, 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 the opportunity that you guys are chasing and you're, you're executing. Um, you got some announcements this week that we're gonna talk about, but, uh, but let's start with, you know, what's going on across the street at Strata. Sure. Um, I hear it's, you know, pretty packed. Yeah, as yeah. usual, a lot of good biz dev going on. So, what's your take? Yeah, no, it's it's been uh, pretty interesting. You know, I've been here for a couple of years now, and it's it's amazing to see the uh, the evolution. Um, I'm always uh, uh, intrigued by how much more and more we hear about uh, Hadoop, and I know I've heard you talking about the trend here, where there's just a lot of changes to that platform. I sat through the Hadoop 2.0, you know, tutorial yesterday for for a couple of hours, and to see the uh, developments there with you know yarn that they're putting in and all the stuff with Storm and making this more real time, um, that's offering kind of a good glimpse into you know the future of where the adoption is going to go. So it's interesting to hear that, interesting to hear the use cases for it. Um, and I think now you hear, you know, you still hear about the interesting, cool technology, but a lot of people are really talking about how it's driving, you know, value for their businesses, how they're using it in conjunction with data warehouses, uh, its its role in the ecosystem. So it's, you know, people are putting the pieces together. And you guys, you know, play a vital role. I mean, everybody talks about data, having data strategies. We've had a lot of discussions about chief data officers. Mm -hmm. uh, so it all starts with the data yeah. and being able to, to integrate all the different data sources is a, is a key uh, starting point, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you can't do that, you really can't get value out of the data. So why don't you talk about that a little bit and where you guys fit? Sure, sure. So I keep hearing, you know, the, the term used a lot here around uh, a data lake, right, and, and the things that you can do with a data lake. Um, you know, I'm from New England. Um, I like uh, the state of Maine a lot. You know, there's a couple of thousand lakes in there, right? Um, but one of the problems that you have is you have all these, you know, waterways in, uh, in Maine, and as they like to say in Maine, you can't get here from there. Um, Actually, they say you can't get here. <laughs> from there. <laughs> exactly, with, that, with a good accent. So um, I think that's the, the problem that we see in the, the digital lake say, um, side of things, right? Yeah, People right. have all these repositories. They might be, um, you know, one thing on SQL Server somewhere, somewhere on Oracle, Vertica, you know, you name it, Teradata. Um, and how do you uh, move data around as you need to in a very efficient fashion, a quick, uh, efficient way to do that um, with speed, with performance, ease of use. And that's kind of the problem that, that we go after and we help out with. Um, yeah, and, some people um, have called that a data landfill, right? It's just there and you can't get to it. Maybe right. the tributaries aren't connected or maybe they are exactly, and you can't yeah. really navigate them, right? And that's yeah. really what you guys do. And it's, yeah, and you think about the time to value, right? It's, it's um, you know, of course everyone cares about performance and, and we help with that, but there's also the fact that, hey, if I want to set up a new data stream, pull it in from somewhere else and I've got a new project to get going, if it's from an existing data store, which in most of the time it is, um, you know, that could take somebody uh, weeks or months to do, you know, dedicated DBA, dedicated development effort, um, and all of a sudden this great idea you had for a project to put to test um, is something that you're now looking at three months down the line and how valuable is it then. So addressing those types of problems, getting the data to where it needs to go is a big part of what we do. You know, I wonder if you could unpack that a little bit because I sure. think for a lot of people it sounds like black magic, right? You take sure. all these diverse data sets and all of a sudden you're making sense out of it and does that right. really work? How does that really work? What's the sort of secret sauce behind all that and, and why all of a sudden is this industry able to do it? I mean, I presume it's a confluence of another factors, cheap yeah. storage, processing power and, the, and algorithms and the like, but yeah, I wonder yeah. if you could sort of 
um, you know, help us squint through that confusion a bit? Sure, sure. Well, I think if you look at the uh, the history of this here, right, people have had tools, um, you know, for 20, 30 years now around ETL, right, for moving data, which is all about extracting, doing the transformation, doing the loading. Um, so most big companies have that in their toolkit, and it's something they, when the first thing they think of when they want to move data. But a lot of those technologies were built, again, for the, the databases, data warehouses, if you will, of 20 years ago. Now things are much more fluid, dynamic, there's so many more different ones. Um, and that process doesn't work. If you think now just about the new, you know, uh, powerful data warehouses out there, um, you know, whether it's, you know, Vertica or what's going on, you know, Teradata with their Aster or their unified data architecture um, or anything with Pivotal, these are very, very powerful platforms. And so you have the capability now to get the data over there and then do the work, you know, use the processing horsepower to actually do any, you know, real transformations or other things you might want to do on it. So the paradigm has changed. People really care about get it over there as quickly as possible, um, and then the technology has evolved that you can actually figure out what you want to do with it once it's over there. So that's been kind of one shift that's enabled us to come along and look at it a little bit differently. You don't have to do this in a batch process. You don't have to do, you know, all this crazy work on it before you move it over necessarily for a lot of cases. Um, and we've been able to come in there and use newer technologies like um, in-memory processing, looking at how you do change data capture, and doing that not just for transactions, but optimizing that for data warehouses. We have a lot of data moving in one direction most of the time. Um, we've been able there and really update the interfaces. I mean, we have a very you know, nice, easy to use, you know, GUI interface, as you might expect most platforms would have. But a lot of the people who are doing ETL products, they either look, they're either a command line interface, believe it or not, or they are, um, you know, they look like a Windows 3.1 mm -hmm. interface, um, that, you know, very basic and simple. So um, the technology has changed, the needs have changed, and that's allowed us to come in there and, and play it a little bit differently. Excellent. So let's talk a little bit about some news you guys announced um, back in December. Yeah. Uh, some important news, uh, acquisition of uh, Hayes Technology, and I understand it's focused around SAP. Yes. Uh, and some of the, um, of course, HANA is uh, the center of their um, their efforts these days, kind of really they're building out their whole portfolio on top of HANA at this point. Sure, so tell yeah. us a little bit about Hayes and what kind of capabilities that brings to uh, Attunity. Sure, sure. This is a, uh, it's a great, uh, you know, complimentary, you know, acquisition for us for, for what we do. Um, and they solve the problem of um, when you look at an SAP, um, you know, uh, data set, it is very uh, interconnected, right? If you have one transaction record, it might touch, you know, a piece of the data set that might be over in HR, it might be a piece of the data might be over in sales transactions. So it touches all these different different places at the application level. Um, and we've seen our customers ask about this, and we're very focused on the, you know, the database and data warehouse level, um, but you have to kind of think the next level up with SAP. Um, and they have been working uh, with SAP for many, many years on solving the problem of how do I get the data out if I need to do something efficiently with it, whether that's my test and development set, how do I carve a piece out, um, or if I need to do um, some sort of uh, synchronization between two sites. And how do I do that efficiently? Because one way to do it is just take a whole copy of everything, <laughs> move it over and then do your work and that would take you in some cases days or you know and um, and be very expensive to store it um, and then the problems only amplified as you said with HANA um, you know great platform you know really solves uh, you know a lot of high performance issues um, but you have to think about the the cost for performance trade-off um, and trying to move a whole you know HANA set over um, would be you know an expensive proposition so it's a way to uh, solve again that data movement problem that we address um, and we've been doing that for files and, and, and databases and data warehouses and taking that to the next logical step of what are the challenges people have at that SAP level or the app, that more of that application level and help them with their data movement. So just dig in that to a little bit more if you could. So yeah. is that, so it's, it's a challenge because not only is it the database layer, but they've also got all these different applications where the data exactly. essentially is surfaced to multiple applications and that would, that's what makes it more of a complex effort to get that data out, is that correct? Exactly, because the SAP, you know, uh, if you want to move over a certain record, it says, well, you know, you better take over, you know, this part of the SAP, mm -hmm. you know, application, and you might have to take over this one and that one, because that could change with it, even if it hasn't, right? It's, it's going right. to basically insist that you're moving large parts of it over, because they want to bring a very large, consistent set um, of, of the SAP information. Um, and so being able to know those endpoints, being able to carve those pieces out um, and bring over that consistent is, is a hard challenge. Mm -hmm. um, and the founder of uh, uh, Hayes, a guy named Matt Hayes, you know, has been working on that for 10 plus years mm -hmm. and, and, and really focused on that uh, and they've become a very popular solution for the SAP community. Yeah, it's interesting uh, having, you know, 
been in this market for a while. SAP, uh, you know, great applications and a uh, great right. company, very successful. But there all there's, there has always been some challenges getting data in and out of the system and getting, in a lot of cases, non-SAP data to kind of integrate with SAP focus data, but um, so so talk about how that kind of complements your overall portfolio. So I mean, you've, sure. you've kind of you've ticked the boxes, right? You work, with, yeah. You can work with Oracle, SAP, right? And some of these new uh, NoSQL databases, Hadoop. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more about Hadoop and where that's going. Sure. But it yeah. sounds like you've kind of got the uh, pretty much you got the database um, uh, ecosystem, uh, all the all the boxes checked. It sounds like it, it does. It does. It's funny, you know. In the fall, we did a little blog. I think we called the you know the thirty one flavors of uh, databases because we cover so many, right? Uh, and data warehouses. Um, so this this adds. Uh, to, to that uh, uh, is very complimentary. Um, so it's, um, you know, it fits with uh, our, our model of trying to help our customers. And, you know, it makes sense from business side. We already had uh, uh, customers out there who were using uh, Attunity products mm -hmm. uh, for doing more typical, like, uh, SQL replication and whatnot. Um, and they were looking at Hayes, and after the acquisition, um, they said, oh, well, you know, we're already using Attunity. Um, it's easy for us to sign this deal. You know, you're, we know Attunity, they're a proved vendor, and, uh, and yeah. bring it in. So there's a complementary, not just on the technology side, of course, but on the business side. A lot of the customers that we face are the larger enterprises mm -hmm. that have you know, lots of different flavors of databases and data warehouses, and 10 to 1, you know, they're, they're probably going to have an SAP somewhere in their business. Um, so it lets us, you know, call on each other's customers mm -hmm. and, and understand how we can help them with kind of some of those broader questions. Right. It's a good fit uh, from, uh, from a customer perspective. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about Hadoop. You mentioned, you know, we're seeing a lot of uh, action around or, or people working to make Hadoop real time. Sure. Whether that's through Yarn, yeah. uh, integration with Storm, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of the streaming uh, framework uh, born in, at Twitter. Yeah. Uh, so talk a little bit about how that, how you approach that market. It, it, you know, we're at that point now where we're seeing a lot of talk about that, and that's clearly where the platform's going. Sure, sure. Um, and so what role does that play in, or what role will data integration play? Yeah. Once, you know, once you get the promise of, of a real-time platform, right, right, yeah. you've got to get the data into the platform, and you've got sure. to do it in a timely way, and that's right where Attunity comes in. Mm -hmm. um, do you have plans to kind of uh, work sure. closely, more closely with the, the Hadoop community? How do you see, see yourselves attacking that problem? Sure. Um, well, it's a, uh, it is an interesting area, and, and I, you know, I heard uh, uh, Jeffrey Moore's talk, you know, the crossing the chasm, um, and uh, when you think about uh, Hadoop, you know, I think that's an interesting one that's going to kind of uh, uh, move up and, um, you know, grow in adoption there. I also think it's, you know, disruptive, right? When you think about disruptive technologies, it kind of starts out for one use, this data lake processing, lots of things, um, and then as it moves up market, right, if you think of adding on Storm and other things, now it becomes more real time. So that changes the landscape of everything around it, right? It's not just um, how fast can I get the data, but what other things can come in there support it, and that's where data integration is going to play a role. Um, you know, we've, we see people today thinking about the problem of maybe I just want to get things and do my data lake, you know, to do the, pro the processing in there, and then move it into, um, you know, maybe a, a data warehouse on the back end. So we see those cases. Today we're, um, you know, we're kind of at the beginning steps of that. We work a lot with Amazon and the, and the cloud and whatnot. Um, and besides, you know, Redshift and, and RDS, we also support uh, EMR, so customers will take um, uh, files and bring them into S3 quickly and efficiently, and, and we help them with that, and then they'll get them into EMR. So we're seeing, at least in our community, that kind of sandbox, you know, trial, proof of concepts, easy to get spun up in the cloud. Um, and as the demand grows for doing this more, you know, on-site and other things, um, we're definitely going to follow that closely, because I think more of those data integration challenges will start popping up. Yeah, and I mean, just what do you make generally of, of the, I guess, the Hadoop ecosystem and, and kind of the landscape? You know, obviously we, we cover here that we cover the horse race between the different players. Sure, I sure. Mean, what do you, what do you, what is your take on kind of where the, um, is all that competition uh, benefiting the platform generally? Uh, mm -hmm. Are you seeing more innovation because of the competition? How do you kind of view that Hadoop landscape? Sure. Um, I think it's, uh, I think it's very, you know, it's been good for the, the, the landscape. It's not just the new players that are, are doing it. As you know, there's some established companies with their Hadoop offerings, and that has forced, you know, the big players to really rethink about, um, you know, their current databases, their data warehouses, how this fits into the whole thing. Um, so can I predict, you know, how that's going to look in five years? Look, I, I have no idea. But I think it's forced enough of um, uh, visibility into the market that um, people now have a lot of selection, a lot of choices, and, and that's a good thing, I think, for, for the end users. Yeah, well, it's interesting to see how the kind of the, the mega vendors, the IBMs and the Oracles of the world are kind of uh, contorting themselves to fit into this Hadoop world and, right, right. Um, you know, where they've got these legacy 
products and databases mm -hmm. that don't really fit, you know, especially with the appliance model, yeah. with the scale out, uh, you know, open source commodity hardware paradigm. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, but it's interesting to watch, and it'll, it'll be. Um, I'm curious to see. Of course, we've talked about today whether we'll see more acquisitions in this space, but sure, yeah. Um, always very interesting. So, but let's talk a little bit about what's next for you guys. Um, what do you expect this year in terms of, what's on your roadmap, I should say? Is it uh, focusing yeah, yeah. on some more technology innovation or is this more kind of a year to, for you guys to scale even, sure. even further in terms of sales? What's kind of on your yeah, roadmap yeah. this year? No, we, we've had a, uh, you know, a great uh, run last year in terms of growth of our products and whatnot. Our, our big data offering products grew by about 140%, so it was a, it was a nice year. Um, so that's, we've really- That's replicate. Is that's really a replicate your, your main product. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's yeah. those and, and products uh, right. around those. Right. Um, and so, uh, so we've had very good growth there. So we've focused on, you know, looking forward on how do we capitalize on that. So we've hired a lot on the sales side, you know, to, to, to grow that and the marketing side. Um, so we're trying to, you know, scale up the business. We'll be integrating more and more of all the things we do with, uh, with the Hayes technology and, and, and the crossover with SAP. Um, we'll also um, are looking at, you know, more of the, if you want to think of the systems management, uh, side of um, of replication because a lot of our users will use us in you know certain departments in certain areas um, and then they start thinking about well how do I manage you know everything around that and, and put all the pieces together um, and have that kind of control panel view if you will of things um, so we're working on some innovative things around there and um, as I mentioned um, you know we've got some work with uh, Hadoop now with through the EMR side and we're following that market and I think you know we'll, we'll keep an eye on that um, and and then, of course, uh, we've been very successful with the cloud and Amazon. So yeah. we're we're working closely with them, looking at ways to you know uh, grow that that model as well. So a lot of different yeah. fronts will keep us busy. Well, kind of related to that, just one more question about the, the cloud. How do you see the cloud playing uh, playing out? That the whole cloud meets big data. Sure. Um, you know, we've been covering this. We did our market study, uh, and and it's still relatively small. Kind of the uh, sure. big data workloads that are in the cloud. We're seeing a lot of tests and dev and, and yeah. AWS. What's it going to take, in your opinion, mm -hmm. for you know the, the the big data and the cloud to really constantly make their courtship, if you will, to really <laughs> right. make it uh, make it where a place where you know enterprises are going to actually run you know big production workloads, mission critical applications. Sure, sure. I think like a lot of things, it's it's uh, showing the the value of it. Um, and we've helped uh, you know customers uh, do that. So a lot of people see the promise, you know, the, the ease of scalability, the lower cost points of like Redshift as an example. Um, and I know you've talked to some of our, our customers who use that before as well. Um, and I think what shows up uh, on the value side is they, they can see the the tangible results, you know, when they start using Attunity right away. Um, so um, oftentimes I mentioned, you know, you see the promise of the cloud, but then wait, it's going to take me three months to get in there. I'm going to have to ask, dedicate a DBA yep. to the project and do all this work. Well, this isn't sounding as good as I thought it would, right? <laughs> right. Um, so, uh, you know, if we come in there and others come in there and really ease that onboarding process, right, okay. then you start delivering more of the value. Um, and people can really capitalize on it. Um, so I think it's seeing that ROI, um, seeing the quick ROI, um, that's what's gonna you know, help drive adoption overall. So I wonder if we could talk about your, your growth. I said at the top of the, the spot here that you guys have been, been smoking and I think mm -hmm. the, the, the street, seg, seg, segments of the street <laughs> have been catching on. I mean, you're, yeah. you're, you're still you know, sort of viewed as a niche to a lot of people, but your, your, your growth has been quite uh, astounding. Mm -hmm. um, you had a great quarter last quarter. You're, yeah. You know, showing good run rate. Seem yeah. to be executing and also investing a lot in, sure. in sales and marketing. So, yeah. Yeah. So you got all these new salespeople. I wonder if you could talk about how you, as the head of marketing, are sure. helping make them more productive. That's all. You know. Right. Public right. company. You're under a lot of pressure, obviously, to 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 execute. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of that falls on you to make the right, salespeople right. more productive. So what are you doing there? And then I got a follow-up question on just partner productivity. Yeah, yeah. No, it's and, and those are absolutely related. Um, so, uh, you know, it's it's a big part in, in training um, uh, that we do. Um, we also are, are, are in a very fortunate position right now where, um, you know, we've gained enough momentum that we're uh, able to hire, you know, the best and, and brightest from, you know, what have been our competitors in the past. I think they're starting to say, you know, who is this opportunity here? You know, why are they coming in here and taking our business? And maybe I want to join them, right? You know, when a recruiter might reach out. Um, so we're, you know, making sure that we hire the, the people who know the business well and can kind of uh, get in there and up and running. Um, so that, that helps uh, make my job easier. Um, you know, I've been focused on really getting the, the word out and, you know, different platforms um, on, on what we do. Um, and that's, you know, all the traditional things like events and whatnot. 
Um, and when we look at events and how you think about that, because we work with so many partners, we focus a lot of our time on, on those events and making you know, those successful and making our partners successful. Um, and then it's um, you know, other things that we do on um, you know, making sure that uh, you know, we're in the, we're the conversations that happen around it. Um, you know, we did a, a, a great uh, infographic um, that uh, we're going to release soon that talks about data movement in the industry that has a lot and pulls together a lot of research as well um, and work with some, some agencies on that. So it's trying to be, uh, you know, trying to, to, to get the word out a lot more. I mean, I, I joined about eight months ago, and um, we were relying, not, not completely on word of mouth, but we were, you know, very lucky our customers were bringing us in. We had a little bit of visibility, but I've tried to amp it up on, on the, the press, the analyst work that we do, um, you know, the partner work, and just from all those angles. And we're starting to see that critical mass in, you know, in terms of website performance, leads coming in, um, and that's been very helpful. Okay, and then I wonder if you could talk about the competition yeah. more specifically. So you, presumably you compete with the likes of, I guess, Oracle and sure. Informatica, um, maybe some others in that, in that space. Why, what, what sets you apart? Where are you, sure. where are you winning? Sure. Well, I think for us, if you look at, uh, you know, the competitors and, and other people in the market, um, you know, there was a company uh, still part of uh, Oracle called Golden Gate that was mm -hmm. acquired by Oracle. Right. Um, and, um, you know, I think now that they're, you know, they have to work with, you know, the bigger Oracle portfolio and bigger company. Um, and they're working on technology that's been around for a while. Our products are fairly new, fairly innovative, so we've got that kind of technology uh, advantage when you look at that. Um, and then we also have, you know, the unique uh, side of being independent, right? So that um, if other players, other major data warehouse providers want to work with someone, we're kind of that neutral Switzerland in the mix, if you will. Um, that's big enough and have enough uh, known customers that they're comfortable working with, and that can be attractive from a business side to work with versus, uh, um, versus that. Um, when you look at Informatica, um, you know, they're a great company, um, but a lot of their solutions are very focused on, you know, the ETL side of things. Again, we're more, more focused on uh, adopting the technology, our replicate technology, for the modern use case where it's all focused on getting it over there as quickly as possible, making the process easy, making it efficient. Um, and because we're so focused on that, we bring immediate value there and are a bit of a different play. So you can, I guess historically you compete with Golden Gate, but you're also a partner with, with, with Oracle, right? Do you not? Um, I, uh, yeah, I can't, I can't say that much about Oracle yeah. um, as a company um, and what our relationship is, but, um, you know, we, we find ways to work with a lot of people. Yeah, so, okay. Yeah. All right, great. So uh, I guess my, my follow-up question there is yeah. I'm trying to get to uh, Otunity and yeah. its IP and yeah. how critical it is to your sure. partners, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it's, again, sometimes it's hard to squint through all these relationships. Yeah, yeah. So I guess, I know you can't talk yeah. about it too much. But but, but I'll give but, you an, an, an example. You know, we have a great relationship with, uh, you know, uh, Microsoft, right? You know, yeah. they, you know, they uh, OEM a lot of our stuff, so they find it as a critical technology. Um, obviously, they have a lot of work they do with SQL Server. They have stuff they do with PDW and whatnot. So, um, so yeah, I think the big players are seeing, you know, high value in what we do. Yeah, so, okay, so you guys will partner with them, and you're a key component of their sale. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get to, yeah. you know, how key. I mean, yeah, I know yeah. you're going to say, you know, very key, <laughs> but, course, yes. but is, it a, is, it a, is it a function? I mean, would they... Would they lose the sale if it weren't yeah, yeah. for you, or, well, well, I or think could they replace you with some other? Yeah, you know, it's your it's or? it's um, you know like any partnership, you know the value of it is um, um, you know goes back to are they getting some some real value out of what we do, um, and that's a big yes for our partners. I, for them, it's a question of I have a new implementation you know going that I want to get running, and I need to get the data in there, and I need to get it quickly, easy. I want to make this as efficient process as possible, um, and we help them with the sale that way, right? Um, you know, we've had uh, sales that we've done with partners where, um, you know, they, uh, uh, they sign up for both of us and then the kind of paperwork follows for us because they're already proven yeah, yeah. the big guy <laughs> and then we're kind of the ride along. Yeah, um, you'll, you'll get paid. Yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll get the money. But, the delivery. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so they bring us in. We're very fortunate to that. And um, because again, they get high, high value. So what it. makes a good partner for, for you guys? I wonder if you could describe that generically. Sure, sure. I think uh, one of the things we've benefited uh, very well from uh, in the partnership uh, ecosystem is, um, you know, working, um, you know, getting uh, that close open door um, to like their test labs and what they do. Um, so I'll give the example of, again, we have a lot of partners, but I'll give the example of Vertica. I know the guys were just in here, mm -hmm. but it was fantastic. We, uh, we had our Vertica offering, um, you know, uh, uh, middle of last year or so, um, announced it at the Vertica show. And, um, you know, it, as part of that, we spent, you know, weeks, our technical guys in their labs working side by side, 
basically getting pretty unfettered access to you know the questions that arise, the specific ways that they do things, how they do their copy commands down to the technical level. Um, and when you know when the when the uh, partners trust us enough to open the doors for that type of relationship, uh, it's beneficial for both sides. We have a better solution. We get a better working relationship, um, and uh, then they want to pull us in, right? Because they know us well, we know them well, and um, if there's an issue props up, we know exactly how to kind of resolve it. So, so pretty much any database vendor would be a great partner for you, right? Is that fair? Or? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and when we've covered the uh, you know we've covered the waterfront pretty well. I mean, you know, we added you know as I mentioned, Vertica. We added we've added Atiza. We've added are you working uh, with uh, Greenplum or at all? We or? work with the Pivotal guys and all that. You used to, yeah. you used to work at EMC, right? So I used to work at EMC, EMC but that that, uh, yeah. that predated my joining the company, yeah, yeah, right, so they've right, had right. a good good relationship right. with EMC. Um, so it's yeah, it's, I, I, it's hard pressed to mention that you know somebody that we don't work with. The, the list is pretty pretty well set now. Well, I think the important point uh, yeah. about being the Switzerland is it's it's hard to imagine HP letting uh, you know Golden Gate Oracle to come into their their lab and work that closely with them, and that's what I think being independent allows you guys to do. Um, yeah. So you know, while, while you know, Golden Gate has the has the benefit of you know the Oracle machine behind it, mm -hmm. um, they don't necessarily get the access and, and the kind of the uh, integration with some of the database players that uh, an independent player would get. Yeah, well, you, you said it, not me, but yeah, I I, uh, I think that's <laughs> that, a good thought. Yeah, that's that's my take. That's my <laughs> yeah. that's that's my analysis, Dave. What do you think? Uh, well, I, yeah. again, I just I think that you've got a differentiation yeah. differentiating technology. It it fits perfectly with the momentum of the big data market. Mm -hmm. uh, as I say, I think your partnerships are, are making you guys very very productive. Absolutely, yes. and that to me is a key to you guys continuing to execute and live up to the expectations, the more recent expectations. Again, I think. Nobody really knew about Attunity. It came mm -hmm. sort of on the map. Wall Street sort of picked up on it. You had some yeah. sharp analysts that, sure. that, that, that that focused on you, and the stock's done very well. And now mm -hmm. people are starting to pay attention. Um, and I think uh, I think there's a lot of momentum right now for you all. Yeah, so yeah, no, I'm very very happy where we've uh, where we've come, especially in the last year. So yeah, good. All right, well, good. You keep it up. You know, pressure's on. You That's know? right. <laughs> <laughs> you can't let up in this marketplace. But uh, Lawrence, thanks very much for coming back to the Cube. It's always a pleasure. Good to see you again. Oh, great to be here. Thanks for having me. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back. John Ferrier, Jeff Kelly, and myself, and the entire Cube team. We're live from Silicon Valley. This is Big Data SV hashtag Big Data SV Silicon Valley. This is the Cube. Right back.